I just want to talk about one thing. The kind of anointing I have, what I went through in trying the spirits, and, and, and I did this uh, for years, to hear God's voice on everything, to be very sensitive in the spirit, where just him and I worked this out, and his teaching me and telling me to back up to no one, that once he gives me an answer, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to get spanked because somebody doesn't believe that that answer came from God. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to uh, insult God uh, because somebody thinks they know better. Well, they may know better for their own life, but once you enter into my life and you ask me either for prayer or for advice, then you have entered into my realm of understanding, and then you either take it or you don't. If you don't take it, uh, usually I'll get an answer like, uh, well, I didn't ask you for that reason, as though you already know what's going on. If you knew what was going on, you would never come to me. You would never ask me one word. If you understood what was going on. Um, there are times in our lives that God wants to draw us closer and he wants us to depend on nobody but him. So when you come to me and I see certain things in the spirit, while I'm reading, I can feel all that in the spirit exactly. God's telling me exactly what's going on. And then, and I, and I tell you, and then you come back to me and you say, well, that's not the reason why. Look, I had two people talk to me yesterday. One of them, I, I think I was a little harsher with, and it was a he, and wow. He was no he was no disappointment whatsoever because the way I, I I told him he could have taken it as a, an, a rebuke he could have taken it as an offense he could have done anything with it but he was so easily entreated he was so able to take what God was giving him and and inside of me as I'm working with him, I'm thinking, wow, God has something planned for this young man. <clears throat> now, I didn't, I didn't even hear an answer from him yet. But yet, as I'm reading what I'm reading, I'm at a different level completely as to where he's at. Because I could already see real clear. <clears throat> but I had to answer him on his level of understanding. And it meant correcting him. Boy, oh boy, he come out with, and it didn't take him very long. I think you're right, Marion. That was his words, because I can see that I this and I that. You know, that, boy, that was amazing to me, because that showed you the heart was easily entreated. It doesn't instantly rebuke and say, no, I didn't do that. I, I'm, I didn't. I didn't tell you that for that reason. Like, you're mistaken or you're wrong. And there have been people that have said to me, well, you're mistaken. I'm going to pray for you to have discernment. Well, be my guest. Uh, but I know that my dis discernment is perfect. I know and understand where God took me to get it. Am I capable of mistakes? Not with what he called me to. I can probably make some mistakes on other things, but when I'm working with my calling, I'm right on the button and I know it. I have so many people that will say to me, well, you know, I had no idea they needed that message real bad, but God did. And God lays it on my heart and tells me what to do. He lays, he lays everything on my heart and tells me what to tell you. Now, if he has a specific direction he wants to lead you in and you look and read that and you take uh, offense well I didn't I didn't want that I I, I can't I, I did not uh, it wasn't because I I did not believe or whatever look don't ask me if you are not willing to take my advice 
you know, I used to have people call me up and, oh, they wanted to use me. And, and a lot of people did. They used me as a Christian counselor. Number one, that's a great responsibility. They would call me up and they would almost demand, because I was a Christian, that I had to answer them. And I could instantly tell if someone was going to listen to me or someone not. And this one woman, she didn't like what I said at all. And I knew she wasn't going to like it. I know the second I'm, I'm writing or speaking, I know exactly what is going on, what's going to come back. I don't ever write a letter. I don't write a Gmail. I don't write anything that God doesn't already show me ahead of time what's going to happen with it. <clears throat> I don't engage like that. I don't flounder. I'm not out in the air wondering how I should answer this person or what they're going to do. If you think that I concern myself about what you might think or what direction you might go, you're wrong. I'm only concerned about God and listening to God, to God. And when he tells me something and you don't accept it, I'm done. There is, what more can I do for you? I can do nothing else. Am I upset with you? No, it's silly. There was this one woman that called me up and what she was doing was this close to sexual abuse with her child as though I didn't know and understand this stuff, she figured since I was a stranger that, you know, uh, she could fool me. When I told her that she is on the borderline and that she needs to repent of this, thinking that doing this is right, well, of course, she got offended. And instead of telling me that she was offended and and didn't believe me, instead of being honest about it, she tried to wheedle her way around everything. And so she worded it in such a way that I, she thought I would never guess what she was doing. <laughs> but I told her straight out, look, you called me, I did not call you. You needed me, you want my advice. Okay, I gave it. Now, if a person doesn't listen to me, I don't want any parts of them because they're going to keep on coming back on you. They're going to keep on proving that they know more than the prophet. That I'm not interested in. I don't debate over it. I don't. An answer is an answer and I stand by it. God gave it to me. God revealed it to me. And you will probably in the future of your life figure it out you will probably find out that it was right on the button. But I don't have to go through that. I don't have to go through somebody thinking they will correct me and they will straighten me out that I just don't know what I'm doing. Mm. I've only done this for how many years? I'm going to bring up another example. There was a young lady who was sleeping with somebody who wasn't her husband. Her husband sexually abused her, okay, which made him very wrong. But she wouldn't leave him due to money, okay. Another man comes into her life, and she claims she fell in love with him. And she was sleeping with him with her husband's permission. She is going around to other pastors and pastor's wives, and she is upset because the first encounter of all this uh, hot sex, uh, she wanted it renewed. She needed him to have his passion back. She needed him to love her like he used to. This is mind-boggling, okay? Number one, she's asking for a second honeymoon with a man who is not her husband. A lot of times in marriages that that, dies some and you never get it back you never get it back because you can't renew that first time it just it just can't happen but she had everybody praying and she she did it this way she said well you just agree with me in prayer and i'm going to pray 
And this is how she would get them to do this. And she would pray for, oh, God, to, to bring him back to this. And she was literally, literally controlling this man. So she got him so confused, so upset. She had a venereal disease. She picked it up somewhere. And she blamed it on him. And he was just absolutely flabbergasted and shocked because he didn't sleep with anybody else. But she blamed it on him. She got this man to a point where he would literally cry. And he would he would say things like, I have to feel good about myself. I don't feel I'm a good person. Well, of course you don't feel like you're a good person. You're sleeping with another man's wife and you know it's wrong. So how are you going to feel like a good person? So when I talked to her and told her the truth, she said, you don't know what you're talking about. You just don't understand. I mean, I practically could bust out laughing. You don't know me. You, don't, you, just, you just don't understand. And the funny thing about it was when she did this, and she was rebuking me. She raised her voice uh, in the telephone where my husband could hear. Oh, you don't ever raise your voice to me, ever. And he was in the other room and he heard. And he got up very angry at her and said, hang up on her. She doesn't deserve you to talk to her. Don't waste your time with her. Hang up on her. Well, when she heard that, I mean, she was all apologetic. I'm so sorry, whatever. I tried to lead her to the truth and told her the truth. It wouldn't work. As long as she had people supporting her and telling her that God was with her, with this second man, I told her, leave your husband. Get a divorce. If, if he's done these things to you, then... And leave him and get a divorce. She wouldn't listen to me because money was more important to her than anything. But she had things with God where she had them so twisted up and manipulated. And it's a power of control. Now, this young lady had a lot of problems. Number one, the, the guy was like in his 30s and she was pushing 50 and and she was out pretending to be this innocent young thing with everybody she looked a little bit younger so therefore she really used it everywhere she went she didn't have anything up here to tell her the difference between right and wrong except somebody who would stand firm enough and say this is a sin this is wrong don't do it you've got to pray Repent of it, and I'm willing to pray with you. Well, that day would never come, so I had to just drop her. I couldn't have anything more to do with someone and listen to these words who will not listen. If you ask me for advice, if you ask me to help you on something, if you ask me for prayer, and you don't like what I've said, you don't like what I've done. You don't like how I've prayed. Don't ask me. I tell you all, unsubscribe to me. Don't have anything to do with me. I don't know what else to tell you. So, if you can take the truth, and you could take it to heart and say what I've been teaching, Lord, I must have done something wrong. Show me the way. Show me where this is. I had mentioned to her unbelief, and she's well, I didn't ask you because of unbelief. <laughs> sure you did. If you if you believed, you would you would be able to pray by yourself. But as I was listening to what she wrote, I saw clearly that at one time she had a lot of power with God and it just like fainted. It just like drifted away. And, and I saw that as clear as a bell. And that's why no matter how she prayed, she did not believe that when she 
would be with him that she could pray for him by herself. She just didn't believe that. How could you say that is not what I was talking about? So look, I love this person. I am not against her. I do not hate her. I only want to use it as an example for all of you to know. If you are going to contact me and and you're not going to take my advice and you already know how I am, I, I'll tell you the truth no matter what you say to me. I tell you the truth, Matt. You think that because I never met you before, I know nothing about you. I know more about you than you know. Because God reveals it all. If you needed, if you were in a bad way with real bad sin, I would know it, not tell you. If that's what God wanted, maybe he would even lead me not to. But I'm telling you, don't go to people and ask them for advice if you're not going to listen. Don't go to them and ask them for prayer if you're not going to listen. I told this person I will be with you 100% in prayer. I, I will agree with you because look what I did. I will agree with you that God will give you the power to help him. Because you see, the man wasn't sent to me. He was sent to her. The man doesn't need me. The man needs God in her. So she needs to be building up her faith so she could not only be a help to him, but her whole family. And she wants to throw it back on me like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I could see it clearly. Some of you people, you'll, you'll, give, me, uh, you'll give me comments and I could see straight through those comments. I could see exactly what God wants me to see. Some of you are so sincere. I mean, you're a joy to be around. I'm serious. I get some Gmails where it's a joy to hear from these people. Because whenever they, they don't pound me with a bunch of questions, demanding that I answer stuff that it's impossible to answer in a paragraph. It really is. Because there's so much more to what you are asking than I could ever tell you in a Gmail or even may tell you in a video. You would have to listen to a lot of my videos to be able to understand what God is saying to you. So this video is about if you're not going to listen, please don't bother with me because I am never going to back up. I am never going to say, well, I made a mistake. I didn't know. I know better. I know better. You will come to a place where you will understand that it is you have that has the problem, not me. I'm anointed for this. And I know how to walk and talk in my anointing. So if, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, if you even want to play with me. Some people, they just like to play with you. They want to talk. They want you to know how they think and feel. And they want to tell you what's going on. But they don't want you to have anything to do with telling them the truth. Don't bother me. Please, if you don't want the truth, that's what I'm about. I'm going to tell you the truth no matter what. If you're playing, I'm going to tell you. If you don't understand, I'm going to tell you. If you think you know it all, I'm going to tell you. No matter what it is, I'm going to tell you. Unless God says, don't tell her or don't tell him. They just don't understand and they never will. So you know what I do in those cases? I'll just go on to the next person. Because if I can't reach you, why waste my time? There's too many out there who are very sincere, who are seeking for God, and they're not looking for somebody. There's a lot of people when it comes to Christian counseling that are looking for people to blame for their problems. Oh, yeah, they'll suck that pastor right in. Now he'll sit down and, and he will counsel them and he'll pour out his heart. And they will sit there and they will listen to a word he says. They'll walk away and blame him for everything. Why? Because they want somebody to blame for their problems. And they haven't found it, so they target him. They don't know they're doing it. They don't even understand that they've done that. 
so where he where is he left? He's left licking his wounds with their rebuke. When in all honesty, if he had enough of God, there's no wounds to lick because nobody's going to hurt you. Nobody can offend you. None of this is said because of offense. This is said because people need to understand. If you're going to be honest about life, then you share it. Then you tell someone. If you're going to be honest about the whole thing to yourself, then ask for prayer. But if you're not honest with yourself, you're going to always come back at the person that you are seeking advice for. Now, you could say, well, I didn't mean to go into all of that. Well, what did you mean? Why did you bother? Why do you want me? I'm a very detailed person. You could see that in all my videos. I explain it specifically. I explain it plainly. And I am very detailed on it. I strive not to miss a point so that people can understand it clearly. Now, I wanted to help you. That's all. And it's misunderstood. And that's okay. I'm not angry with you about it. And you don't need to be angry with me. Go on. Go on with whatever it is that you're doing. And strive towards God. That's all I ask. Strive towards him to help him. Find, help you find a way.